because Michelangelo is a party dude, hooray, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He was my favorite out of all the Ninja Turtles growing up. So naturally, good evening, nerds and nerdettes. It is I, Alpha Omega Sin, and I want to make a video about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, because recently uh, I I've actually been perusing about through all the stores doing early Christmas shopping. And I've been picking up a lot of the figures from the newer sets. And recently on a video by OK Chief, he was out and about and he got all the classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys because they re-released them. So Playmates, you know, sty styled everything exactly the same. Uh, it's the same exact molding. Like, it's just like, you know, as if you went back to 1988 and you picked up those figures. And it, it's, it's so fucking awesome. Um, and I had seen that, I'm like, dude, if it wasn't for his videos, I would have had no clue that they existed. So I went and I picked them up, except for the first Toys R Us I stopped by didn't have them. So I went to a secondary one. They had all of them. They had a whole bunch of other shit there too. But I mean, I'm trying to pretty much like, uh, because my son's six now, and he just recently turned six, so I'm getting him a bunch of Ninja Turtles, all the while getting all the ones that I grew up with, which I have all sitting exactly right here, so if you're wondering what the fuck is a stack right here, then this stack of stuff is mine. Uh, and, but the thing is, usually I open up all my figures, uh, because I, I like to have them out on display and stuff like that. In this instance, these are all getting hung up. Like, uh, above my doorway, like, if you ever saw my game room tour, uh, the one doorway where the Iron Maiden poster is, actually, um, I'm actually gonna hang them up all along there. I have, like, the thumbtacks sitting over there, and I think they look really cool, but I want to go over these with everybody and just talk about some of my memories growing up. Uh, well, one thing I actually want to do is show you side by side, um, some of the stuff so you can see the big difference. Now, this is the throwback right here, the throwback uh, classic Shredder figure, which he's got a cloth cape and stuff like that. I always thought that his figure looked absolutely stupid. Even when I was a little kid, I thought it looked really stupid. But it's Shredder, and I think Shredder's a really badass character. So I had to get it because, I mean, you know, he's the arch nemesis to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, this is the new Shredder from the new series looks way fucking cooler like when you see that shit side by side and, and the packaging is, is it's a lot smaller like significantly smaller but it, the new shredder does admittedly look a lot cooler when i think a shredder though i think a super shredder because super shredder is so fucking badass he's also big sexy kevin nash so it's kind of cool but um it is it right on the back you know everything looks exactly the same as it did back then whenever you went and picked up the original figures and it's really cool like if you see right here uh where all the weapons and stuff are it's just like one big rack them and you're supposed to like twist them off and snap them off so that they can have their individual pieces and uh i always just thought that was like kind of cool because it's like an entire weapon arsenal whereas nowadays they're all separate and you don't have to do any of that shit so it's kind of nice and they're all they're not all just fucking like dungaree fucking um bottom barrel i'm taking a fucking massive dump and dropping the kids off at the pole brown because that shit just nah that, that ain't fucking working but you know it, it is what it is but it's pretty cool up in the corner it says classic collection uh, originally released in 1988. It's kind of crazy to think that it's been that long. Um, so you get to see what those look like side by side. Um, I got in Splinter too. In Splinter, it's it's one of those things. Anytime, like if you were a kid growing up and you had these Splinter and Shredder, more than likely you lost their little cloth outfit that they fucking wore. And I swear that this one is actually a little more detailed than the original one that we had gotten because uh, it looks like the paint job is actually better and a little more detailed and his outfit is a, a bit darker than the original one. At least that's what I'm trying to remember. Keep in mind, I haven't actually looked at some of the original figures in years and years and years. Um, they, uh, besides all these original throwback figures, by the way, I figure I should mention that they do have the turtle van, which is depicted right there. And they had that there, but shit was like $50. And <laughs> I mean, I'm already doing Christmas shopping for people. So it's like, I can't actually afford that. <laughs> it sucks. I mean, I, I, I may get it eventually, uh, assuming it's not sold out, but it's kind of crazy because I had them whenever I was growing up. Like I had all the original turtles, like I had this entire set 
whenever I was little. I remember I'd gotten the Turtles. I don't remember what the exact Ninja Turtle I'd gotten first, um, but I'll just go with my favorite first because I had already said it at the beginning of the video, and that's Michelangelo. I always, uh, I like Michelangelo just because he was goofy and didn't give a fuck and stuff. And uh, like a lot of kids that got into Ninja Turtles, I didn't. I didn't actually read the comics first. I saw the cartoon first. Uh, nowadays, I've gone to go back and read the comics, and the comic is very, very gritty. You know, um, you'll definitely start relating it to things like Daredevil and stuff. But it's uh, a black and white comic. I know for some people that's kind of hard to get into because they prefer whenever it's very colorful and stuff and uh, well illustrated. But it looks really nice. Uh, don't go after the first prints of the individual comics, though, because it's going to cost you a fuck ton of money. But, um, you know, if you can get them, like, graphic novel form and stuff like that, definitely do it. But I remember, uh, it all sounded kind of silly, but I mean, I was, I was in grade school whenever I had first gotten Ninja Turtles, and I remember the weapon rack. I had no clue what to fucking do with it, because I was just like, what the fuck do you do with this thing? Like, I'm trying to make them hold it. They're holding the entire thing like this. And it's just like, nah, that shit ain't working. The Ninja Stars, uh, it, l fucking lost those, like, very first time. Um, you know, I I'd end up swapping their arms and stuff just out of boredom and their heads, like, put one head on another figure, and always thought that was cool. So, um, but Michael Angel, I just love the shit out of him, like, in the intro, he's, like, busting some moves out on the fucking dance floor, and a fucking disco ball is dropped down and shit, and he's, like, bitches, and it's so fucking awesome. Um, I'll go to, uh, so we got to see my favorite, my least favorite of the bunch is Leonardo. Despite the fact that he has my favorite weapons out of all the Ninja Turtles, because, I mean, swords are badass, but dual-wielding swords, that's pretty fucking awesome. But, uh, personality-wise, I never liked him. I thought he was a goody two-shoes and just boring and bland and stuff. And I don't know, he's just one of those characters, I'm like, you shouldn't be the fucking leader. Raphael should be the leader. He's a competent leader and wouldn't take shit from anybody. Uh, even if he's brash and, you know, headstrong and stuff like that, but, uh, Leonardo, I don't know, I just... Call me fucking crazy, but I just, I don't know, I didn't like him nearly as much. I didn't hate him or anything, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, that's just kind of, that's just the way it is. Um, now, second favorite Ninja Turtle out of the bunch is the person I think you know, would be a competent leader, and that's Raphael. Ra Raphael's awesome, especially in the original movie. Uh, and, like, kids everywhere lost their shit when he's like, DAMN! Come back here! I'm not finished with you! We were just like, you can't say, can he say that? He just said that, man, you just got so much cooler. And Casey Jones is a fucking badass. I actually wish with this bunch that they had Casey Jones. Uh, I, you know, I know that he's not part of that first wave and stuff, but if they end up doing like a wave two, I would like to get Krang, uh, Casey Jones, and Baxter Stockman, uh, Bebop and Rocksteady, because those are all important figures and characters within Ninja Turtle universe, and on top of that, a foot soldier two or three or whatever. But, uh, you yeah, know, there goes Raphael and his badass size. I just always like that. On the back is, like, about the turtles. Uh, catapulted from indie comic origins to superstardom by the original uh, uh, Murakami Wolf Swenson Swiss, wh whatever animated series TMNT ran on air for nearly a decade, 1987 to 1996, and ranked number one ratings for an unprecedented five straight years! Exclamation point. Because that is a big year. That, that's that's a big deal to be able to go that strong. I mean, it it was a monumental success, and even today it still is, which goes to say something. Featured in over 190 episodes, the fun-loving, shell-kicking teens are still recognized around the world and fondly remembered by fans with every bite of pizza. And I, I can attribute one thing. Pizza is actually my favorite food. I still remember, like, whenever I was little in, uh, in grade school and stuff, they were like, what's your favorite food? Like, pizza. And now here I am, you, you know, a fucking full-grown adult. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm 29. Favorite food is still pizza. I eat it, like, every fucking week. Like, no shit. Uh, except for today, I had Popeye's chicken. And, like, little Nikki says, Popeye's chicken's fucking awesome. Because it is awesome. But, um, yeah, pizza, just a big deal. Except for their kinds of pizza, it's just, like... They're putting ice cream and anchovies on shit and like onions and I'm like, no, <laughs> and that's all right. That's pretty much just like my my your asshole is gonna erupt like a volcano and you're gonna be fucking done for, man. 
But and then they got the, like, the little story back there, so that's kind of cool. Now we'll go with my third favorite Ninja Turtle, and not because I don't think he's cool, but it, he is pretty badass in his own right, and that's Donatello. Donatello is the brains of the outfit, uh, all, always really good with schematics and planning and shit. He'd build real elaborate stuff for the Ninja Turtles and stuff, and you know, he's a brain whiz, and, and that made him pretty cool to me, because I think anybody that's just like smart enough to fucking like build shit to try to go after like the Technodrome and like an entire thing of like fucking robotic ninjas and shit, and like a headmaster ninja who will just fucking rip you to shreds, <laughs> shredder, shreds, yeah, yeah, pun, but you know, Donatello is a bad motherfucker, that's all that there is to it. Uh, and I always wonder, I'm like, damn, that dude's like rolling around to bow staff, and bow staffs are pretty fucking awesome. But I'm like, when Shredder just like chop through that like nobody's business? I always thought about stuff like that, but man, if you ever get hit with a bow staff, like I mean like a legit solid fucking wooden bow staff, now nah, that'll take your ass out like, like, uh, and you're just, you're just fucking completely done. But yeah, Donatello, he's a bad motherfucker, that's a, and I, I like like, on the packaging there, that they do them up in pretty much like the same art style from the original series, but you know, it's colored, so you know, that that looked pretty neat to anybody that grew up on it stuff. Oh, um, if you also want to see what one of the Ninja Turtles from the new series and the old series look like side by side, then there you go. And uh, on the back for this one, Michelangelo, jokester and hard-hitting nunchuck hero. Impulsive, creative, and very social. Michelangelo is the heart and soul of the Ninja Turtles. The runt of the litter, he may be the smallest of his mutant brothers, but that doesn't make him the weakest, just harder to catch. Enemies beware, Michelangelo is a master of the cur uh, Kusa Rugama. <laughs> I'm fucking up words left and right. No fucks given, frankly. <laughs> Nunchucks with secret and sharp surprise. So, you know, it shows like what he has and on the back there it shows all, all the characters from the first wave there. And I actually, I got my kid every single one of these except for April O'Neil because I don't know if he actually wants April or not. And it's weird because whenever I was growing up, uh, I never had April. She was hard as fuck to find for whatever reason. I don't know if anybody like who grew up like oh, Ninja Turtles like I did. Did you ever have trouble finding April? Because for me, she was hard as fuck to find. That and uh, the big um, the big fucking robot suit for Krang. I can never find that either. And it's kind of neat though, because I actually had it temporarily. I traded my copy of Paperboy on NES just to get the whole Krang robot suit. Then I had to trade it back because my mom said she'd fuck my day up if I didn't. She, she actually liked it a lot. But... Since I, I'm on the subject of, like, Ninja Turtles and stuff, now, I mean, when I say I had a lot of Ninja Turtles, I had a fucking ton, but it wasn't just, like, just Ninja Turtles. I had Ninja Turtle everything. I had Ninja Turtle slippers, I had Ninja Turtle bathrobe, I had Ninja Turtle fucking clothes. Like, I think for two or three different years at school, I wore Ninja Turtle shirts to picture day. I had to. Like, I fucking had to, because it was just like, dude, come on. My favorite one was this one. It was, like... Uh, white shirt with like black sleeves and like black collar and stuff and it had the Ninja Turtles so It was like this bright pink Sun in the background it looked real cool and had all of them drawn like real badass and shit and They're like flexing and posing and shit and I like that one so much like even now granted I wear like nothing but black shirts, but I'd probably fucking rock that I'd also like to go back in time and get my speed racer shirt too because I missed that as well um but, um, out and about, it, I know this isn't like the figures, but I figure I'd, I'd fucking show it off anyway. I thought this would be pretty cool. They also fucked up on the price for this, and they had to give it to me for $3. But, uh, I was also getting him some, um, some Legos, and I saw this, I'm like, dude, this is fucking awesome. So, you got Krang, and you got Michael Ancho, and you have a foot soldier. Uh, I, he doesn't have any of the other, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle sets, but I thought this would be kind of a cool starter. I don't know. I, I think it's pretty neat. So, yeah, I'd seen that, and I'm just like, dude, I forget how much this costs normally, but it's not no $3, uh, despite the fact that it's not a big set or anything. But, yeah, it, it looks really fucking cool. Just Legos are so expensive. You have, to, you have to wait for that shit to be on sale to be able to pick them up and not fucking break the bank. Now, um... You know, like I was saying before, I had Ninja Turtle everything. I watched the show every single day. Um, I mean, I'd fucking dance and jump around and punch and kick. I'd be like, yeah! Woo! It, you know, as soon as the theme song came on, I just, like, I was all about it and thought it looked so fucking awesome. And it sounded awesome. It was just like, you felt like you could just, like, fuck anybody up. And you were, like, so into it. And it was really cool. But, um, you know, I mean, 
me and my friends, we'd all draw Ninja Turtles, we'd play with them, we'd trade Ninja Turtles and stuff. Uh, I remember one time, my brother got so pissed off because I'd always, like, I'd hover around him and my sister because both of them were, like, older than me and I thought that they were cool. So I'd go and take my Ninja Turtles into, like, their rooms and they're trying to hang out with their friends. I'm sitting there playing with Ninja Turtles. I remember one time he took one Ninja Turtles and chucked it at a fucking wall and it exploded. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> and like, like I put it back together and it was like that, that's actually where I got the idea originally to take their arms and legs off and put them on each other so I'm making like mutated mutant ninja turtles and shit are <laughs> running around like that's definitely not Donatello's leg that's what the fuck is going on there and I don't know I always thought that stuff was kind of funny but I mean I I did I liked all the stuff I liked all the games which I have the games right there um this one I'm going to save for last so the first one, which I had rented this a lot, I didn't actually have it for a while, um, but it's the very first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for NES, and this game is, it's infamous for being hard as fuck, like, and, and everybody knows about it being hard as fuck, as a matter of fact, there goes one of the stages, right there, that bullshit, everybody knows about that fucking swimming scene, but it, it is, it's a hard as fucking nails game, uh, in Ultra Games, which everybody knows is Konami, um, just on the cover, and it always fucked my head up, because I'm like, why Why are they all wearing red? It's like a bunch of Raphaels, like, what are you doing? You know, that's one of the things that you end up thinking whenever you're little. But it's like, fresh from the classic comics come heroes in a half shell. Turtle power. <laughs> Carnivorous robots chow down in Chinatown, while brutal ninjutsu warriors, blood descendants of the deadly Foot Clan, <laughs> bust up bystanders from the Bronx to Broadway, and it's just, I didn't see them beating this shit out of random bystanders and shit, that would suck though, running around, actually that'd be kind of cool, can, can you imagine like a big open world setting like Grand Theft Auto, and your Ninja Turtles is going around fucking stuff up, that'd be awesome, I, I would love to get the, like the turtle blimp and shit, but anyway, this game, like, it, it bummed me out because, I mean, I'd play it and play and play it, but I never beat it. Even to this day, I still have not beaten this game. I just don't have the patience for it. I'm sure that if I sat there and tried frivolously, like, you know, without fail, it's just like, I'm gonna give it all the fucking conviction I possibly can. But, uh, yeah, just never beat the game, you know? But I had to get it because it's one that, I've had it for a while now, but it's one of those games, like, you know, it's a big part of my childhood, so naturally had to go and pick it up. Um, this, I still hold as probably one of my favorite beat-em-ups in the entire world. Uh, one of my favorite NES games, because I, I plowed through this game to the point that I could beat the entire game damn near without getting hit when I was younger. Nowadays, not so much, but it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. This cover, I drew tons of different times. I drew pretty well, too. My art, my art skills are complete fucking rubbish now. But this was just fucking awesome. Like, this had exclusive stages that you wouldn't see, you know, in the arcade version. Uh, Cowabunga! Coupon for free personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut. I wish I could go and cash in, but admittedly, I'd probably just keep it, because i tell them, like, but this is the coupon from the Ninja Turtle game on NES. Are you really going to want to take this from me? You shouldn't want to take this from me. At least, have the fucking heart, man. Let me keep it. But this game, it's just, it, it is really fucking awesome. Um, like, from the very first stage on forward, you're just, like, running on a complete high. Especially by comparison to um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like, the first game. You know, this one, I thought, had better control. It, it wasn't as brutally fucking difficult. The characters, uh, the character sprites were, like, a lot bigger, looked a lot nicer, were a lot more detailed, had better music. Like, to me, it was essentially exactly what you do with a sequel. You just get bigger and better and better and better. And they really hit their stride with this, and I thought it worked really well. Because, I mean, for a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game, you know, you want to beat them up. You want to run and run, you want to kick ass, and they did that. And then we go on to the technically superior in a lot of ways, but still not my favorite on NES, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3D Manhattan Project. And I was, again, psyched as fuck to be able to get this. And I remembered him mostly from uh, the the figure line, which is kind of weird because uh, a lot of uh, a lot of kids end up getting introduced to stuff in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles just because of the figure line alone. And it's kind of weird to now go back. You know, it's 2013. Uh, we're heading on into 2014, and I'm still discovering new stuff about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But it's one of those things like it, it's kind of like uh, been reinvigorated for me since I'm now passing it down. You know, uh, to to my kid, and I think that's kind of cool because it's something like we can kind of bond over, 
and he actually likes the original series a bunch too. Like I actually got those on DVD and he likes watching those just as much as the new stuff, you know, and, and it's weird because if you see them, there, there is a, there's a, uh, there's a contrast between them, but it's just it's something really nice. But also having the games is one of those things. It, it's pretty cool. Uh, it, but I do, I, I like, I like this game a whole lot. I just, I don't know. I, I guess I just have a special place in my heart for uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles too, but this game, and it also has a bitchin' fucking cover. Like, dude, that, that all of them I thought looked really cool, but this one kind of reminds me more of the original one because it's drawn more like the comic-styled ones. But the hippest and new turtle travel featuring jet-powered surfboards, a blimp and a spaceship to whisk you through eight awesome levels. Shredder will show you all kinds of sinister news sites, including the Typhoon Tidal Pool, Baron Von Spleen's Battle Barge. These are like tongue twisters to say, by the way. And a never-before-seen tour of Manhattan's most wicked haunts. Bodacious new turbo attack moves. But it's... I, I love reading the back of shit like that. And they quit going with Ultra Games, so if you see up there, and uh, they went with Konami. But uh, in these games, like, especially 2 and 3, play them in co-op, trust me. I mean, playing through them in one-player mode is pretty awesome, but it's, uh, it, it's co-op. That's really what you want to roll with is co-op, seriously. It's awesome. And speaking of co-op, speaking of beat-em-ups, speaking of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games, BAM, motherfucker! Did somebody say, what is one of the best beat-em-ups ever to exist with that question? Without much equal, it's Turtles in Time. That's what the fuck it is. Turtles in Time. And by the way, do not play Reshelled. That game is a fucking travesty, frankly. <sighs> and also, again, another really kick-ass, cool fucking cover there. But this one is showcased... Like, the Super Nintendo was, you know, a fucking juggernaut at the time. And could go and do, like, arcade-perfect style gameplay here. And... If you don't have this, you can also look into getting the Hyperstone Heist on Sega Genesis. I figured I'd go and mention that. Uh, I don't have the game. I, I actually got a hold of a loose cart, but I sent it to the Sainted Magnus, which he should fucking thank me, like, endlessly for, because I don't even have the game. And that, that's fucking tragic. But uh, this game was, like, a holy grail for me to be able to find in, in a complete box. Because the first time that I ever got to play this was at school. And I was in I was in fourth or fifth grade at the time, and I got to play in the cafeteria because uh, the one dude that I was friends with, his mom was one of the cafeteria lunch ladies, and we'd hang out. And, uh, the cafeteria also doubled as the auditorium, so there was a TV in there. Hooked up Super Nintendo and just sat there after school playing the living shit out of it, you know. And the weather is all nice and stuff. Then we start running around outside, pretend we're Ninja Turtles and shit, and it's just. Th those are the kind of memories like I think about and I associate, and it makes me happy because not only did it kick tons of ass then, it still now, again, in 2013, is really fun to play. And, and if you're watching this and you're like, I never got to try any of those games, um, at the very least, play this and play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, because they're fantastic. But, um... I did. I want to go and talk about some of this stuff just in like a little more detail. So, you know, now you all get to learn a little bit more about Alpha Mega Sin and his upbringing in his life. You know, I, I had extremely awesome parents who like, um, you know, hooked me up during the holidays with really kick-ass toys like that. And uh, it, it was just a very fun time. And it's cool that it can be an, around even now. You know, it's not something that you know, it's just, oh, that's retro and vintage and da-da-da-da-da. It's something that's lived on and it's been recreated, you know, for a new generation over and over again. Um, you know, this is like the third incarnation of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, 2000 series was extremely badass. This one, you know, while not as edgy and shit, is still really good. I, I was kind of on defense about it. I was like, I don't know, man. I'm... Uh... But I watched it. Not bad. It, it isn't. I can't wait for them to introduce, like, uh, all the other characters I'm really into. But, um, yeah, it's just a bunch of figures, a bunch of throwback figures. I'm going to have them up on the wall uh, exactly where I, I think that they fucking belong. You know, I could go and get, like, the original figures in a package, but these are only $9.99. <laughs> I was just like, I'll, I'll stick with that. That's that's a fuck down cheaper than being, like, I don't know, like, 30 40 maybe even more for the original figures. But if I ever found them down the road, I would I'd definitely scoop them up. But this is, this is my childhood, um, you know, and this is something that I still love genuinely and want to go and share it with everybody on here. So if you did, if you were one of the people on Facebook who was just like, oh my god, I fucking totally do a video about that, then thank you a whole bunch for saying that because I wasn't sure anybody would even give a fuck. Even if, like, 
you know, only X amount of people watch it. Fuck it. Uh, and, but if you did like this, uh, there's other shit that I've thought about, like, reviewing and talking about when it comes to figures. Because, I mean, I actually get a lot. I just don't know if people will ever really give a damn. Like, I have Godzilla figures I've been dying to go and talk about. I have... <laughs> Um, let's see, up there I have like a Hitman figure I want to go and talk about. I know I have other ones laying around somewhere, but <laughs> um, the one Tyrant figure I never even got to review. I kind of just opened it because I couldn't wait, but yeah, that one's really fucking bitching. Bitching in the kitchen. But, again, thank you a whole bunch for stopping by, listening to me yammer on, um, you know, about my childhood, my life, and stuff that I really give a shit about. But at least I got to have game-related stuff included with that, so it's not so bad. So, looks like I will include this. Like always, nerds, nerdettes, and gamers, game the fuck on. And remember, pizza power!